Now then YouTube, I am the Tough Man and welcome back to a guide to SolidCraft or a SolidCraft tutorial or whatever we want to want to call this series. Now this second episode is going to base itself on where I think personally the next part of your SolidCraft adventure starts. And that is the Nether guys. Now a lot of people uh, put off going to the Nether for a long long time. I wouldn't do that personally because some of the stuff that you will need is actually in the nether. So let's go into the nether and see what kind of spawn rate, spawn thing that we've got going on here. I haven't been in here yet, so it's literally downloading the terrain as we speak and generating all things that are in the nether. And there's a few things in particular that you're probably going to want to get. And uh, one of them... is a decent spawning spot. Unfortunately, that's a bit dodgy. So let me sort this out by putting some smooth stone out here. Now you'll notice, guys, that there is quite a bit uh, different with the nether. Now using this fax texture pack is actually a good idea in the nether. Uh, that allows you to see the nether ores a lot, lot easier, as you can see in front of you. And one in particular is very, very hard to find and uh, if you haven't got Sfax installed. Let's get rid of that, let's get rid of that, and let's uh, get back. So, <clears throat> why do you want to come to the nether? Well, there's one thing in particular that you're going to want to try and find pretty early on, and that is Glowstone and the nether fortress itself. So while I'm actually here, I'm going to just bob down, and of course you're not going to have this ability um, to fly around the place, but never mind. You'll be, you'll be fine. Just put that down there, otherwise I'll never find my way back out. Now we're looking for the nether fortress. Glowstone is pretty much everywhere, uh, and you can pretty much get a hold of it very, very easily. Now you'll see there's a lot of different varieties of trees, and we're going to get to that in a future episode, but that is from the nether stuffs mod, but uh, don't worry yourself with it just at the moment. If I can find this bloody nether fortress, I can then get on with the next part of the video. And it looks like there must be something down here. Now generally the nether fortress doesn't spawn that far away from uh, where you are. But I've had stages where it actually has and uh, that's not been uh, very good. And I've also had dodgy uh, nether fortresses that uh, don't actually have any kind of fortress to it. And this looks like it might be one of them. Why always me? Is there anything down here? Come on, you know you want to give me some stuff. You can usually tell when it goes straight through like that. Okay, bear with me one second guys and I'll try to find what I'm trying to find. Well I hope you guys have more luck than what I am having but I'm tr struggling to find another nether fortress unfortunately that fortress back there was just pretty much a dummy fortress there's nothing there's no real content to it there's nothing inside it it was just simply a series of towers um, but the, the thing in particular that you're wanting to be able to get is nether wart nether wart is going to be a great source for your thorncraft adventure now, you, you, Thorncraft really gets to a certain point and you can't do anything without nether wart. So just keep that in mind uh, for going into the future. You will need to come into the nether for nether wart, glowstone and soul sand. If you've got all them, then you can continue on um, and everything will be quite nice. The thing is, I'm trying to squeeze through here. Uh, if you, yeah, I'm not quite sure why. That's happening to me recently, but I'm coming across a lot of dummy, dummy nether fortresses, really. And, you know, there's not much use in them. Not much use in them at all. Which is a damn shame. It is. Damn shame. So let me get back home and um, show you the next part. Alright guys, you're back from the nether, you've got your soul sand, you've got your nether wart. I would seriously suggest that it's a very good idea to start building yourself a nether wart farm. Now, you don't need too much in a nether wart farm, because they grow pretty quick. So let's get that, 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 that. And they do grow in the overworld, guys, so don't worry about that. Um, so there you have it. 
nether wart. Now that's going to be a great source in the future for a few things that are all farmcraft related. Uh, the next thing that you want to do guys is to delve into the realms of industrial craft and there's a reason for this. There's a certain particular item called a crop. Now these crops are really, really, really useful early on for getting yourself set up with sugarcane. Sugarcane, as you remember, um, has to be planted next to a water source, which this was at one, sp at one time, I can assure you. Let me, get a, let me get some blocks to be able to deal with this, eh? There we are. Cover that. If you cover a water block, it stops it from freezing over. Okay, so why do you want crops? Well, crops are really, really easy to make as well. Crops are only four sticks. And who hasn't got four sticks? Look, four sticks makes two crops. So let's grab another one just for the funnies. But previously sugarcane could only be planted next to a water source. It can't be planted anywhere else. You know, you can't plant it anywhere near, you know, away from a water source. It has to be directly next to one, otherwise it just won't plant. And it also has to be on normal ground. Like that. Well, not anymore. Certainly not with crops. Crops, you can actually plant them away from a water source. And uh, you can plant it on tilled soil as well. Now these things are really good. And bone meal doesn't work on crops, I don't believe. At least uh, from my experiences, I'm sure it doesn't work. Nope, it doesn't work. Uh, it does use the bone meal, but it doesn't actually work. Now the thing is, I'll leave that to do it, but this is a really fast way of growing sugarcane because, of course, you, you don't have to have it in a big long line next to water, water blocks all the time, and these things actually can drop up to four sugarcane at one point. And we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, but I want to go inside and I want to show you something else. I want to uh, go forwards and explain something about this pack. This pack does have Greg Tech uh, installed by default. It is an optional mod, you can choose to take it out. However, Greg Tech modifies quite a lot of recipes within um, Industrial Craft and also a couple of recipes from uh, Forestry as well. Now, it does make the game harder, however it takes longer for, the, for you to actually complete the game. It's giving you a longer experience, really. And I think that's a good idea. And I certainly think it's a lot of fun, uh, Greg Tech. It's a little bit of a pain in the backside, especially when you're used to uh, certain recipes and getting certain things at a certain time. So, for example, the Macerator. It co now costs uh, three diamonds on top of you know uh, some other bits and bobs that you wouldn't usually have to do in normal vanilla industrial craft. Um, you don't, you, you, you're not actually required any diamonds to make a macerator at all. But what I believe is that uh, Greg's actually made it um, balanced in, in such a way. Because, of course, you're effectively doubling your ores with a macerator, so why not make it that much more expensive? Um, why not? And that's a really good idea. However, Greg Tech also comes with a lot of things that actually require you to go to two different dimensions, well not two different dimensions really, um, that require you to go to another dimension, in fact yeah, two different dimensions, to actually go through Greg Tech. So it's a really good idea to actually follow the vanilla storyline. In other words what I mean is get yourself a house, get yourself set up with the usual setup. Um, apart from you know all this stuff, I'm on about food. I'm on about you know weapons and getting tools and armors and such like that. Get yourself all tooled up and get yourself to a point where you can find the stronghold and you can find the end because there are some things in the end, especially with Oz. There are some Oz in the actual end, guys, that you that you will need for Greg Tech and to really push on with Greg Tech further on into into Greg Tech itself. So what I would suggest people do is work towards that kind of goal. Um, we've already got the nether there. There is some ores in there also that Greg Tech has added uh, that give you certain dusts and stuff that you can use in certain machines later on. But uh, using industrial craft is notoriously much more difficult now that Greg Tech is installed. If you have that installed then 
the next, you know, what I've just been talking about is going to apply to you. If you don't have Greg Tech installed, then you're probably already used to the way that vanilla uh, industrial craft works with solar panels and such and so forth. But if you have got Greg Tech installed, I would suggest that you go along with the vanilla storyline at least for a while. Get yourself to the end. You don't have to kill the Ender Dragon. You don't have to kill any Wither bosses just for the moment. However, you will want to probably get yourself some stuff sorted. Um, in that kind of thing. As long as you've got the end there so that you can get in there and get to the R's, then that's 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 going to be good for you. So that's a little tip, pro tip, on uh, Solid Craft, guys. Uh, let's have a look, see if those sugar canes have grown. Yes, they have. The sugar canes have grown. They're not fully grown yet. They actually do go above the crop, just slightly above the crop, but it allows you to uh, right-click and you can get a sugar cane back. But the good thing about, and sometimes you don't get one back, but uh, the good thing about these sugar canes is that they automatically, they're automatically replanted. They, you know, you, unless you break them, unless you left click on them, I'm not going to left click on them, well, I could left click on them, that's broken now, it's gone. And that is a, a bad crop. And I wouldn't leave empty crops lying around because weeds can grow in crops and then the weeds can actually take over the other crops that are around the place. So just watch that. Um, but sugar canes you can grow them away from water and you can get up to uh, four in one uh, in one crop and the fact that it keeps itself planted you don't have to replant the sugar cane or you don't have to knock just the tops off and then go and you know fly around go under the sea or wherever you've ch chosen to plant these bloody things to try and get the sugar cane that's fallen off everywhere and as you can see the wart, the nether wart there is growing quite nicely as well one thing to really quickly note, guys, going through uh, NEI here, um, carrots is a really, really good source for Thorncraft. So if you can manage to get some carrots from, say, an NPC village, that they've normally got carrots kicking around nowadays, or you can get rare drops from mobs, I believe, that can drop both carrots and potatoes. So it, the carrot is the one that you're after because it's got a particular thing called Vism. Now, as you can see, if you shift-click on an item, you will see these little aspects, and that's from Thorncraft. So... It's nice to have a renewable source of a type of aspect, and that is Vism. Right there, that is one of the great sources of Vism. Um, so just keep that in mind, guys. You'll probably want to get some sort of carrot farm or something going on. All right, guys. Well, I'm back here in the house, and I've just moved the furnace around. I've moved it to the other side of this pounder, because the next thing that I would like to uh, show you guys is the fact that you can actually pump items out of the pounder using buildcraft and this is a really neat idea for automating things because automation is really really nice now if you guys have never played with mods before then automation is something that you're probably not familiar with and never will be familiar with in uh, in minecraft itself so what we want to do is automate the fact that we want we want to put items into the pounder um, in fact I may have to knock out that block. No, I don't think I will actually. Um, you can put things, automate the, the fact that you can put things into the pounder and automate the fact that you can then pump things out of the pounder and automatically into a furnace to be smelted and then automatically pull out of the furnace to go into a chest or something as an end, uh, you know, like the end storage. So where do you actually start with this? Well, the first thing that you want to do is craft yourself what's called a hopper. Now the hopper is a buildcraft object, as you can see here. It's used five iron ingots along with a stone gear and chest, and a wooden chest. Now it's not exactly hard to be able to get a hopper, but you want to place that right above your pounder. And there's a reason for this, is that when your pounder has finished pounding things, and uh, you know all the, uh, the items are getting pumped out, um, this slot will be, f will be spare. Uh, and what the pa what the hopper will do is if you put items into the hopper, it will then drop the items from the hopper into an inventory in the actual machine that it's uh, attached to. So let's have a look at what we can do here. So for example, we had a lot of, uh, of iron ore. Now as you can see there, the uh, number of this is going steadily downwards. And that's because it's dropping into the input slot of the pounder. Now what should happen is when this gets to 64, a full stack, it will stop in the input. 
and then all the rest will sit in this hopper ready um, for when this input has gone down. Now because these are the same type it will continue to keep putting one in all the time when one's being used. So why don't we turn it on the pounder again and I'll show you what we mean. As you can see it's constant there, 63 then back up to 64 and that's because it's taking these items from the uh, hopper and putting it straight into the pounder and that's a really nice neat way of uh, automating what's going into this. But what happens when this side gets full? Well, we're going to get to that. I'm just going to turn that off for right a second. Now using your project table that you've got your piston plan in, grab yourself a piston because you're going to want to need you're going to need one of these and you're probably going to want to use another blank plan. And there's a reason for this because this next object is a real pain in the backside to uh, actually automate getting and it, it, using it in the project table is the easiest way of doing it. So you actually want what's called a redstone engine, that's this thing here. Now it needs a piston, two wooden gears, glass and j uh, just any kind of planks. So you're probably going to want to want to want to want, you're probably going to want to have another blank plan for the wooden gears. Wooden gears are crafted with four sticks pretty easily. You can see there, let's put the blank plan in there and teach it. Lovely. Just take that out. Now we're going to probably want to create a bunch of sticks. We're also going to need some glass. But all this should be nice and easy for you to come across. Glass, wooden planks. We're going to have automated wooden gears. Okay, so, next thing, we've got one piston. We've already got one wooden gear. Let's craft another wooden gear. Lovely. And let's make the engine for the first and only time that you're going to make an engine. Or at least, that's what the plan is. And there you have it. A redstone engine. You can put the blank plan in there. Teach it to the blank plan. Put these away. And then you're pretty much sorted for crafting yourself a redstone engine. Let's grab one of them. Now as you can see, when the item's not in there, you can see there's no piston, there's no wooden gears, so you just really switch the plan out. You can get a piston in. Get wooden gears in. And then again, you can make more redstone engines. It's a really nice, easy way of uh, automating the fact of putting things into a, a crafting area. Now, let's take that uh, redstone engine. We need a redstone torch to be able to power this engine. It doesn't do anything without any power. And we want to put the redstone engine there. Now, you can see it's been all funny and um, turned itself around. There's actually an easy way of fixing this. Get yourself the engine back uh, and use um, a, the pipe, what I'm about to show you in a minute, but you're probably going to want to actually craft this item anyway, so I'm going to show you. It's a build craft wrench. Now be careful, there's a lot of wrenches around, but the build craft wrench looks like this, or it's kind of like, it's greyish colour um, in normal vanilla kind of Minecraft uh, build craft um, textures. And there's the wrench, a stone gear and uh, iron ingots, a stone gear can be crafted with a wooden gear with uh, cobblestone around it. And the wrench allows you to rotate objects. That won't rotate because I haven't actually got a pipe there to actually rotate it to. You're going to want wooden pipe. And it creates eight per time, so watch out, you don't want to you know, numerously click it. But we're going to put the wooden pipe there. And basically what the wooden pipe acts as is um, a pipe that sucks things out of the inventory if it's powered with either a redstone engine or one of these buildcraft gates. But we'll get to that in the future. Now we're able to actually rotate it. Um, if you do have the pipe there in the first place, if you put the pipe down first, it should automatically orientate itself towards the pipe. There you go. So that's just a little tip there for you as well. Now you're actually going to want some smooth stone next. A couple of bits of that. And craft yourself some smooth stone stone transport pipes. And you can do 
In fact, it's probably a better idea to get another hopper, just in case. Because if it can't physically put into an inventory, then um, the the stuff's just going to pile everywhere. So we've got it going straight from there into there. Lovely stuff. Um, now, if we actually power this with the redstone torch, you can see there, it's going to pump stuff out of the side of the pounder. If we can see it. Can we see it? Is it pumping out? Yes, it is. We just can't see it. But there we are. It's um, it, it's a visual thing. It is there. It's just it's it's not showing up. Um, it first puts it into this, but then drops it straight into the top inventory, which is the furnace there. Now, if say for example, like zinc or copper or whatever it is that you've put in the pounder is in there as well, and this has still got iron in, if you've got it piped straight into the top of the furnace then it's just going to go to the top of the furnace and then pop out and then you're just, you're just going to end up with crap all over the floor. So it's best to put a hopper on top of the furnace so that it's got room to store these separate um, uh, separate ores, separate fragments, sorry, so that it can automate the, proce uh, the process. So what we're going to do now is pump out the side of this and into a normal chest. Now just take a vanilla chest for now. You're going to want to do something else a little bit later on. But you're going to want another one of those uh, redstone engines. So there's one I made earlier. Nice and easy. And another redstone torch to power it. Now, be careful guys, with some red, with some buildcraft engines, they will blow up. However, the redstone engines will not blow up as long as it has something to do. At the minute, even though there's nothing in there, it's still pumping because it's still, uh, you know, it's still reacting with this pipe. If I was to take this pipe out, for, uh, however, it will go back and it will be stuck. It's got nothing to do, but it's still turned on. And this will gradually get redder and redder and redder. And when it's that bad, it will just blow up. So watch out. Now, it's also worth noting, guys, that if this side of the pipe, it's kind of a solid side. You've got a, a, you know, um, um, a transparent side and a solid side. Now, it's worth noting that it will pump out the side that is solid. So you want to click a wrench on that to actually turn it to the place that you want it to pull out of. So where's my redstone engine? There it is. Redstone torch. There. And Bob's your uncle fan is your aunt. You've now got a fully automated, although pretty ugly setup, of getting your ingots out. Now you can of course put a chest here and automatically pull out of the chest to go into this hopper at the top. It's totally up to you. Um, but this is the way that I set up my first world. This is the way that I always set up my first world. It's a nice easy setup. I come in here after a hard day's graft mining. I come in here, put my stuff in there. It all goes through the system. It gets sorted out. And whatever I want to use, I can just come to this chest and see that I've got ingots galore in here that I can then go and then craft bits and bobs with. But uh, that pretty much covers what I wanted to cover for this episode, guys. Um, Basically, the, the, the moral of the story is, if you've got Greg Tech installed, be prepared that you will need to go to the nether pretty sharpish, and you will need to go to uh, the end pretty sharpish as well. If you're going to want to get the full experience of solid craft, of Greg Tech, of industrial craft, of all those different techno technical, technological mods, then you're going to want to uh, to go through the vanilla style of play, get to the end. You don't have to kill the Ender Dragon or anything like that, although it will probably be the best option to do so, so that you can wander around there, you know, pretty risk-free. Pretty risk-free, unless you look at an Enderman. So there you are, guys. Nice, easy, quick setup to get set up with uh, with automation in uh, SolidCraft right at the start. If there's anything in particular that you guys would like to see me cover, then by all means put it in the description and uh, the description. Don't put anything in the description because you can't physically do that. That's only me that can do that. Uh, if you put it in the comments section, I will have a look at it and I'll see where I would like to fit certain things in to where I think people would like to go next. Now we've got this set up. The next thing I want to cover is actual machines that use actual buildcraft slash forestry slash anything kind of power. But that's for next episode, guys. I think I've covered everything that I want to cover in this episode. Until next time, 
I have been the Tough Man, and as always, if you've enjoyed this, please give it a like because it would be amazing. If you've loved it, please tell everybody about it because that would be even more amazing. And uh, until next time, make sure you stay safe.